was adaptive radiation that produced the mighty whale. His hands have turned to flippers and he has a fishy tail. Selections made him streamlined for his liquid habitat. Why didn't I think of that? Well, I'm Richard Milner. I'm known as the singing Darwinian scholar. Uh, I've spent many years studying the life and times of Charles Darwin. Um, but what sort of sets me off from other Darwin scholars is that while many of them look only for intellectual insights when they go through the history of science, I look for song cues. I look for moments uh, in the history that would be appropriate for musical theater. There are fossils in the ground, protozoa in the sea, all these unrelated facts made a monkey out of me. Now I see how species were selectively defined. I became interested in Darwin when I was a small kid. Um, I, was, I loved animals, used to go to the Bronx Zoo, the American Museum of Natural History. If you're interested in natural history and animals, uh, you start to wonder where they all came from and where we came from. Pretty soon you're at Darwin's doorstep. But I found him a very engaging character over the years. You know, he's a very large character. Well, you have young Darwin the explorer, you have old Darwin the sage and philosopher, uh, the seasick sailor, uh, the medical student who couldn't stand the sight of blood and left medical school to be a theologian. He was a creationist. He was uh, studying for the clergy. But he said he was born a naturalist and his real life began when he went aboard HMS Beagle on a five-year voyage of discovery around the world. After 10,000 miles, the Galapagos Isles, now I'm tense and exceedingly weary, but I fear that this place will dissolve in disgrace when I use it to further my theory. And I scramble ashore and the sea lions roar, then I hear a contemptuous snicker. I glance up in a tree and there, what do I see? Seven ch I started writing songs in graduate school when I went to University of California as an anthropologist in the early Paleolithic days. And, in, and, and uh, then uh, I continued writing songs about Darwin and evolution over uh, decades. And when I first started uh, giving lectures on Darwin back in the early 90s at colleges, one, one professor said, why don't you do some of your songs for the, for the students? And I said I didn't think it was appropriate. And they said, well, after the show, do a few songs. And they liked it. So I started doing it more. The songs got bigger, the lecture got smaller, and the show, may I say, evolved. There was an ancient monkey with a long and curly tail. This ape evolved into a man. He's teaching now at Yale. A chimp could pass for upper class in gloves and a cravat. To take an interest, an intellectual interest like Darwin, and then translate it into musical theater, this is heaven for me. I mean, and then I realize other people aren't doing this. Maybe other people can't do it. So that's why I should do it, because I don't want to do something that everybody else can do. And I've been very fortunate. I've been played my show all over the world, including in the Galapagos Islands on a cruise ship recently. And you know, they had a little sideshow when I was finished with my show. Everybody rushed out on deck and they had lights on and the insects were attracted to the lights and the flying fish were attracted to the insects and the seals were coming after the flying fish. So that was the second act. 